on this week ahead, we have some key data releases from the US, UK and Australia. Joining us to assess the market impact is Stephen Innes from Oanda. Firstly, Stephen, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Celeste. Now, looking first at the UK, on Tuesday, we have August inflation figures out. Now, July's figures came in below expectations. Do you think August's figures will also miss the mark? And in addition, do you think these figures will have any impact on the Bank of England's interest rate decision out this week? Well, it's, it's interesting we're talking about inflation in the UK. It all really boils around the fact that the weaker pound is actually uh, supplying those inflationary numbers. Now, if we look back at the uh, the last MPC meeting, um, the Bank of England was looking around about a 3%, predicting around a 3% inflation level. But since then, uh, the currency's weakened uh, considerably and actually weakened even more considerably against the euro. So the thought in the market here is we could see some more pass-through inflation uh, because of the weaker pound. And obviously, um, you know, given that the fact that the inflation may come in higher than what the Bank of England thought, it's giving rise to the notion that the Bank of England could come across uh, sounding a little bit more hawkish in their statement. However, let's be realistic here. We're not expecting any interest, any adjustment and policy decision uh, at tomorrow's meeting. So right now uh, what we're going to be expecting is more of a neutral tack uh, from, 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 the, uh, from, from the BOE and this is very much predicated on what we're viewing as a very very benign central bank outlook right now given the fact that there's a heightened political risk in the US, geopolitical risk creeping into the equation and of course the uncertainty that's brewing all around Brexit. This just doesn't uh, sound like it gives rise to a, to, to a move on interest rates. Nonetheless, traders were very cognizant about the, the breakdown on the vote, uh, the, how the members are actually voting uh, towards uh, in this meeting, and also uh, what type of uh, rhetoric is being delivered in the statement. I think this will really uh, dictate the pace of play for the pound uh, uh, post the MPC. Okay, and this week we also have US inflation figures out. Firstly, what are you expecting from this data and how would you suggest dollar traders position themselves? Well, you know, it's interesting. I think this is going to be take the lion's share of attention for uh, for the market, and uh, it's going to be very, very key for policy outlook as far as the Feds go. Um, right now, it seems to me that it's a very difficult trading environment, uh, given the geopolitical risk, given the absolute Fed uncertainty that's built in, not only from the political upheavals in Washington, but also because of Irma and uh, Harvey's, uh, you know, the swath of damage that it's put through the um, uh, put through the, uh, the Southwest U.S. This gives Feds a real cause for pause. However, um, we're thinking that just looking at uh, inflation indexes throughout the world right now, we're starting to see a gradual pickup in inflation, uh, especially in the commodity prices, uh, driven by commodity prices in China. And we're thinking that this uh, could pass through slightly to the U.S. But really, we believe this will be the high watermark um, for inflation this year, unfortunately. And with that, uh, with that view, we still really think that the uh, U.S. dollar is going to be prone to the, um, the dovish Fed narrative. So uh, continue to believe that the U.S. dollar slides uh, throughout the remainder of 2017. Okay, now going down to the Southern Hemisphere in Australia, uh, they're releasing their seasonally adjusted unemployment rate and the unemployment rate for July came in at 5.6%, which was in line with market expectations and August figure is also expected to come in at 5.6%. Do you think that the figures will match this forecast? And secondly, do you put much weight on unemployment figures, particularly when you take into uh, consideration underemployment in addition to just unemployment? You know the um, the employment uh, the unemployment levels in the, in Australia have been quite good um, this year, surprisingly good, as a matter of fact. So we're expecting a. 5.6 to hold uh, over August, and we actually think that the, uh, the, the it uh, it may even creep higher um, a bit to uh, you know to the 5.7 level, if 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 at all. Um, but um, I think the real key for this uh, release right now is um, is the wages um, that's going to come out through the ABS wage index. Um, the RBA has really been centered on the inflationary impact, just like most global central bankers are. So we think um, with this uh, wage with this uh, 
uh, growing at an annual rate of around 1.9 percent. It's the slowest pace that we've seen in Australia in 20 years, and this this is a real real problem for central bankers. You know, we have a, we have a really really good employment levels, but we also have the lack of inflation. This suggests that um, uh, that there's a real systemic problem. But it's not only in Australia that they're finding this; it's globally uh, that uh, all the central banks are dealing with. But getting back to this underemployment level, I think this is a real real key metric for the market and something that the market will take note of. It's certainly um, noticeable that um, Australians are looking for more more work, and um, you know it seems to be that a lot of the employment base is getting sub supplanted by low wage uh, service industry type uh, type jobs, and even the part time sectors are, are taking a lot of the jobs up right now. So right now, while the labor market has shown signs of improvement, the amount of spare capacity is is likely greater than what's being indicated by the un unemployment rate. So this is always something that we have to keep in the back of our mind when, when uh, looking at these Australian numbers. Well, Stephen, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your insight. Thanks for, thanks for having me, Celeste. Talk to you soon. Well, that's all from us here at Dukascopy TV, but be sure to stay tuned for plenty more broadcasts.